follow the money. Climate finance is heating up. It's a trigger word no matter which side you're on, but if you follow money and capital flows, there's no argument. In recent years, one of the hottest segments of the venture capital market has been something you may not have expected, climate tech. The world is increasingly turning to climate tech startups to address the urgent need for sustainable solutions. These startups can be found in sectors such as clean energy, transportation, and agriculture. Climate tech companies do one of three things. Directly remove, offset, or mitigate greenhouse gas emissions, GHGs, alleviate the various harmful effects caused by climate change, or provide a better understanding of the climate and our impact on it. While there's been plenty of talk about green and sustainable investing, investors have been putting money where their mouth is, as this chart shows. You can see the significant investment in climate tech startups and the total venture capital market. Sail where the wind blows. In the past five years, on average, around a quarter of all the money in the venture capital market has gone towards climate tech startups. That's over $260 billion total in funding. And these startups have attracted huge investments in recent years, with many securing funding rounds of $100 million or more. Key points here. Climate tech startups have attracted big investment in recent years as they work to address the urgent need for sustainable solutions in areas like clean energy, transportation, and agriculture. The largest climate tech fundraisings up to 2023 include companies like Expansive, Arcadia, and Sweep, all of which have secured funding rounds of $100 million or more. Here are the largest climate tech financings up to 2023 according to Crunchbase data. You can see them all on the table. And now, here's a breakdown of climate tech startup funding in the past five years, sorted by sector. As you can see, transportation, clean energy, and agriculture took the lion's share of funding. It's worth noting that climate tech funding deal value is represented over 50% of total deal value. Yet, the transportation sector represents 16% of global greenhouse gas emissions. That's a lot of eggs in one basket. Companies and governments are getting more aggressive with their climate targets. There is a lot more greenhouse gas removal and reduction than just transportation. Climate financings were affected by the global slowdown. Now, you may also have noticed that climate tech deals slowed down going into 2023. This shouldn't come as any surprise, as a combination of geopolitical issues, high inflation, and rising interest rates led to weak markets toward the end of last year. For example, Companies went public at the lowest rate in years in 2022. IPO offerings were down significantly, going back to levels last seen during the start of the coronavirus pandemic. Take a look at this chart showing the IPO activity. Last year, many companies chose not to go public and raised capital from private funds and investors instead. However, many of these private climate tech startups could still get taken public or bought out in the coming years and at much higher valuations especially since private equity firms were short up with a large war chest of cash heading into this year. Where's Marin Katusa putting his money in the sector? Marin's made significant bets in the carbon credit market specifically, but with two major carbon credit markets, compliance and voluntary, investors can easily get confused. Recently, compliance carbon credit prices in the European Union hit record highs of over 100 euros per ton. Known as the EUA, and considered the benchmark in the industry, other carbon prices could easily follow suit in the coming years as we approach the critical net zero milestone year of 2030. Here's why. According to a report published by Ecosystem Marketplace and Bloomberg New Energy Finance in 2020, the voluntary carbon market grew by 6% in 2019 to reach a value of 320 million. The same report projected that the market in the voluntary carbon markets could reach 50 billion in value by 2030. That's assuming that companies and governments continue to ramp up their efforts to reduce carbon emissions. Other estimates suggest even greater potential for growth. For example, a report by the Task Force on Scaling Voluntary Carbon Markets published in 2021 projects that the market could reach a value of 50 billion to $100 billion per year by 2030 and up to 1 trillion per year by 2050. That's mind boggling. Katusa Research personally believes that energy transition decarbonization is the biggest investment opportunity of our generation. The carbon markets are an integral part of the solution 
and that's why we're positioning ourselves and subscribers accordingly. You can read all about it by becoming a subscriber to Katusa's Resource Opportunities, and you can click the link below to find out how. Subscribe to the KRO, which is a Katusa Resource Opportunities, to find out exactly what prices I'm buying at and what price I sell at before the trade occurs. And you get to sell before I do. If you want to give your portfolio an edge, consider becoming a member and giving it a try for yourself.